Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I'm talking about the thriller movie from 2020, The Devil All the Time. But before we dive into the story, remember to like and subscribe for more film recaps. Let's get started. The movie starts by going back and forth in time, telling the story of the Russell family who lived in a small town called Knockham Stiff, Ohio. There's Willard Russell, his wife Charlotte, their son Arvin Eugene, and their dog Ivan. They're a close-knit family who are very religious. Years ago, Willard put a cross on a fallen tree in the woods and would talk to God there. He often remembered his time in the war and finding a soldier named Sergeant Miller Jones, barely alive and in a terrible state. Willard eventually puts an end to the soldier's suffering. After the war, Willard returns home and meets Charlotte in a restaurant. Meanwhile, there's another guy named Carl who falls for a girl named Sandy. Carl likes taking pictures. As time goes on, Carl and Sandy team up, with Carl taking photos and Sandy luring people in. Willard also gives his uncle a German pistol he got during the war. At home, Willard's mom, Emma, is really happy to see him. She had promised God that if Willard returned safely, he would marry a girl named Helen. But Helen ends up with someone else, a religious guy named Roy Lafferty, who does some unusual things because of his beliefs. Back in time, Emma worries about breaking a promise to God, while Willard is focused on seeing Charlotte. They get married and have a son named Arvin. They move to a town called Knockamsteff in Ohio and put up a cross. Helen, who was supposed to marry Willard, leaves her child with Emma and disappears. Future 60. Years later, Arvin is nine and gets into a fight at school. Willard teaches him that timing matters when dealing with bullies. Willard and Arvin go out, but they confront some bad guys from earlier, and Willard teaches Arvin to pick the right time to stand up to bullies. When they return home, they find Charlotte sick. She has cancer, and Willard prays for her, even sacrificing Arvin's dog. Unfortunately, Charlotte dies and Arvin's life gets worse. He finds his father dead too. Arvin reports this to the police with Uncle Honk's help. The story then goes back seven years to show Helen and Roy. Roy believes in God's grace but does terrible things, even trying to resurrect his dead wife. He buries her and leaves with his paralyzed brother. On the way, he ends up with Carl and his wife. They force Roy into a humiliating situation, but Roy remains devoted to his faith. Roy wonders if death feels like floating in the air as he dies. He was a preacher but can't find the right words to pray. After Roy's death, Carl takes disturbing photos of his wife next to the body. We go back to Coal Creek in 1957. Arvin goes to Emma's house and finds Lenora, now his stepsister. They celebrate Arvin's birthday eight years later. Lenora, a religious girl, gets bullied at school. Arvin helps her and cares for her like a sister. Lenora visits her mom's grave. Arvin doesn't pray anymore after his dad's death. They meet the new preacher who insults Emma's cooking. Arvin is angry, but Emma stops him. Lenora gets bullied again and prays in the woods. Preston, the new preacher, manipulates her and things get worse. Meanwhile, Arvin learns to choose the right time to act. He stands up for Lenora. She starts feeling drawn to Preston like her mom was to Roy. In Meet Ohio, Sandy considers leaving her abusive husband, Carl. She's visited by Sheriff Lee, who is her brother. Lee warns her due to a kidnapping case. Sandy is actually Lee's psychopathic sister. Lee has his own problems with bribes and illegal activities. Lalique, he meets Leroy, who bribes him for favors. The next day, Carl and Sandy give a ride to a young soldier named Gary and take him to a forest. There, they do something terrible to him. Carl is happy, but Sandy is fed up. She doesn't understand Carl's twisted thinking. He finds religion in death and feels God's presence through it. Sandy reports the incident to the military. We then go back to the Russell family. It's been three months since Lenora stopped going to the graveyard with Arvin. She realizes she's pregnant, but when she asks Preston for help, he denies any involvement and calls her delusional. Feeling overwhelmed and fearing shame, Lenora takes her own life, deeply saddening Arvin. Lenora's burial is somber due to the preacher's stance against suicides. Arvin later works as a road worker. The sheriff tells Arvin about Lenora's pregnancy, raising suspicion about Preston. Arvin observes Preston, discovering his inappropriate actions with another girl. He treats his wife poorly, too. Arvin decides to leave without telling his grandmother and uncle. He plans to confront Preston. Pretending to confess, Arvin makes Preston angry by describing his own deeds. 
Arvin pushes Preston to confess about Lenora, but he refuses. Frustrated, Arvin kills Preston to stop his immoral behavior. After killing Preston, Arvin heads back to his childhood home in Knockhamstiff, Ohio. His car breaks down and Sheriff Lee, under pressure from bribers, kills Leroy and his bodyguard. Arvin waits for a ride and a psychopathic couple offers him one. During the ride, Arvin senses danger from Carl, the husband. Carl empties Sandy's gun, leading to a shootout where only Sandy dies. Yvonne finds victim photos, confirming their evil deeds. Sheriff Lee regrets his sister's death and burns incriminating photos he found. Arvin reaches Knockham Stiff, meets Uncle Hank, and learns about the couple's death. Sheriff Lee links the murders to Arvin, whom he helped when Arvin's father died. Arvin buries his dog's bones, realizing his father's deeds were for his mother's recovery. He forgives his father. Sheriff Lee arrives, hunting Arvin down. Arvin explains why he did what he did. He killed Preston, the bad preacher, and the psychopathic couple because they were evil. He and Sheriff Lee shoot each other. Lee's shot is blocked by wood, but Arvin's hits Lee. Arvin shows photos of Lee's sister's crimes as evidence. Lee dies. Arvin buries his father's gun and dog's bones. He gets a ride, hoping for a new start. He thinks about being forgiven, meeting family, finding love, or joining the military. Exhausted, he falls asleep and dreams about the future. That's the recap for The Devil All the Time. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.